Let's just try that one. A little Spanish? Yes. Christian, can we get a little bit of wine opening music? Por favor. <laughs> Munchie's Guide to Hollywood. Munchies, munchies. Yum. We could sit here and drink wine and rap all night. Christian is a shit, dude. Yeah, I love Christian. <laughs> the Munchie's Guide to Hollywood. <laughs> No one said it better than the late Jonathan Gold. If the restaurant you've been directed to lies between the 7-Eleven and the dry cleaners in a dusty strip mall, then you're probably at the right place. Wow, real flavor. This is a real thing. As you drive down Sunset Boulevard, you pass strip mall after strip mall. If you're looking for a dentist, nail salon, dry cleaner, foot massage parlor, and the best and most well-priced food all in one location, then Hollywood is the place for you. In the early 70s, Southern California experienced a strip mall boom. The oil crisis led to the closure of hundreds of gas stations. And what better way to fill vacant lots at busy intersections zoned for commercial use? Strip malls. With an influx of new immigrants in the late 60s, the strip mall became the perfect place to open a business due to lower rents. I'm about to visit my favorite strip mall restaurants and food trucks in Hollywood. Whether it's the freshest Peruvian ceviche, scorching curries in Thai town, or glistening hunks of al pastor in the parking lot of a shoe warehouse, the best food is found in the most unassuming locations. How could something so simple be this fucking amazing? It's so, so good. My first stop is Sahag's Pastorma, an Armenian deli next to a medical supply store and a family dentist. This is a very good sign. Hi. Hi. You know what, let me try one each of the Pastorma and the Suju and, uh, and the raw meat, I heard about that. Oh, wow. What's that? It's a bear from Armenia. Pear soft drink. Oh, this looks delicious. The sandwich is amazing. The beef is just everything beef out of control. It's amazing. Kind of tangy the sausages. You know, it reminds me of like a, a Thai fermented sausage. And the pastorma is just you think about like the best prosciutto you've had, but not quite as dry. Big big flavor. All you need is a couple slices. It's one of the most unique sandwich experiences I've had. Whoa. This is amazing. I've never had this before, and to me, it looks almost like uh, like Induya, the this sort of like soft, spreadable, like Calabrian spicy pork sausage. Wow, it's real subtle and kind of like delicate flavor, so you can actually taste some of the dry spices that are in here. It's great. Sometimes you take it for granted. You know, you live in LA. Um, to have a place like like Hollywood right outside your, your door, it's amazing to me that just, you know, this whole area is lined with strip malls. It's just one after another. Without buying a plane ticket, you know, essentially go experience a little bit of each one of these places. And then maybe go for a massage right afterwards or, or you know, get your nails done right next door. You know, it's like only in Hollywood kind of thing. This is Armenian coffee. Yeah. Only here could you have a traditional Armenian lunch and then go right next door to Chitlada to have some of the gutsiest Southern Thai food in LA. Chitlada opened in 1971 and quickly became a favorite of Thai town. But in 2006, the restaurant was taken over by a brother sister team, of Chef Dui Sankami and Jazz Sing Sanong. At first glance, the menu seemed to be the same, but Chef Dewey actually added his favorite dishes from his hometown, Nakhonsi Thamarat, in southern Thailand. There was Thai food in LA at the time, but nothing like this. Jazz and Dewey turned Chitlada into one of the most exciting Thai food experiences in the country. 
Can you smell it? Yeah. yeah. Trust me, nobody cook green curry this taste. It's so yummy. In 2017, Chef Dewey passed away, which was a huge loss, not only for the Thai community, but also for LA as a whole. Jazz promised Dewey that she would continue running Jitlada in his honor. Today, I'm very lucky to get a look inside Jitlada's kitchen, where Jazz is preparing one of her favorite dishes, garden noodles. Amazing. So is this something that you consider this like a personal specialty of yeah, you? Yeah, this is this it I created. We start with tofu? Make it little, just little crunchy. But this is our lunch at home. When did you first start cooking? I think I cook when we far away from home because we have 12 in the family, whoever the older. You have to cook for the younger. And was he the oldest? Yeah, he the oldest. The he, oldest. Yeah, you have to wake up 5 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. You have to go to the market, and that will tell you like how you pick the fish, how you pick the cabbage and vegetable. Everything learned from dad, not mom, because mom not cooking. Mom a teacher. Oh, dad was a cook. Dad, huh? the one who cooked. Okay. And all, all that family uh, side, they sell the food in the market. Uh -huh. A lot of garlic, a little bit of oil, ground pork. I think this is oyster sauce. I always cook everything with oyster sauce at home. What flavor do you think the oyster sauce gives to the noodles? A little sweet, salty, and this is the sugar. White onion gonna make the flavor on the noodle. I prepared a, a salad here. So the noodles are just lightly cooked and yeah. they're on top of a bed of lettuce, yeah. bean sprouts yeah, on the yeah, side. Oh, Jazz goodness. garden noodles and get the meat, because it tastes from the meat, right? Oh, wow. It's different. It's not good, it's not, yeah, it's just the garden. This is noodle. amazing. It's unlike anything I've had before. Yes. Is this jazz sauce? Yeah, jazz sauce. We eat with noodle. We're just happy to put in the noodle. Do people ask for jazz sauce when they come A in? A lot, yeah? yeah. Because they know I eat spicy. When they came to America, I never satisfied with any restaurant, because it it's not tasty enough because I'm from South and Thailand, and it's not spicy enough. And mom sent the cookbook called Me Ban. Uh -huh. And I start the green curry from the scratch Best in our curry. family. And you made that for us today, yeah. right? Green curry? You, you can start tasting and you can it? see, yeah. Just like away from home, how it is. Wow, real flavor. Yeah, this is what we bond with. That's this why. is a real thing. Can you tell me why this is so good? Well, what's in it? Is it the curry paste? What the is... curry paste, but yeah. I, one thing when you cook curry, you have to make the curry smell. And how do you do that? Can you tell, can you tell us? Just, you know, put the coconut and stir the curry until you, all the meat, I steam them a little bit. So it's like a cleaner taste. Yes, that's the secret of That's the, the expertise. I've been cooking and I never read the book. I never search for anything. It just, anything that I found, the salt the in front of me. Yeah, yeah I, I just, I don't know how to measure. Spicy, I gotta, <laughs> I gotta pat myself down. I can't. This is the regular one, know. see? I, and dynamite hundred times no, of this. I can't do that. No, I, I don't want you to go to the hospital next as day. As I get older, I can't eat. You know, when I was really? a little kid, I used to eat really spicy always. You know, just. But you cook spicy. For I know, people. but I can't. I can't eat it anymore. You sound like me. I don't know the story of Tilada. Pitoi, what start the restaurant and he. And he said, well, Jad, you have to be here with me, to helping me. But trust me, for three years, I don't know how we survive. I took all the credit card. I have to hire my husband because he won't allow me to come to join the restaurant. Yeah. So he didn't want you doing no, the restaurant at all? Not at all, at all but, but you, I took you still all the money. Yeah. I did it because of Pito. He loved, you know, his dream to have a Southern Thai cuisine. I work like seven days a week, day and night. I left the kid with my husband to take care. Only me in the front and Pitoi at the back. It take a three years and then every single day I pray to the Buddha about Jonathan Go. People say, if Jonathan Go come, people come. From Chitlada to even my own restaurant, Night Market, Jonathan Gold champions so many restaurants in LA by not only putting them on the map, but educating diners and opening their eyes to the beautifully diverse food and culture that our city has to offer. Jonathan Gold is on it, people on earth. I love him so much because no one in the world can tell people like what I put in my Thai tea or Thai coffee. Jonathan Go did like. But he I knew, said, right? Oh my God! How did he separate the? Even he eat the curry, you tell you like, oh, this is lemongrass in there. Like this is the 
deserve to be Pulitzer Award because you really know what are you talking about. You don't dream about money to make business. You dream about how people love you mm -hmm. and come back and talk about you because you're good. I'm a really regular old lady that's so lucky to have love from people. No, I think you're just humble. You know? Everybody loves jazz, everybody loves Chitada. I'm headed to Natalie Peruvian, a restaurant known for its fresh ceviche, lomo saltado, and arroz chalfa. We're meeting up with Eric Costin and Eric Ellington, the Michael Jordan and Axl Rose of skating, who love discovering new places to eat. It's it's funny how many places that so living in the neighborhood and yeah. how like things like this slip by me. When you explain a mini mall with 7-Eleven and it's yeah. in the corner, it's mm -hmm. like it's everywhere in LA. Like yeah, it could be one of like 20 amazing places. Like some of the best sushi places are the same way. Yeah, for you know, sure. It's like the, somebody tells you where it is and you're like, is that the right place? And you're going like, oh yeah, it's the best place in LA. Oh, hell yeah. Perfect. It's so cool. look at that. Oh wow, that looks super good too. I think I like the name the most, Leche de Tigre. Dig in. Right. Two shrimps, we're gonna have to fight for them. So good. It's probably my biggest regret in life, like being from LA and not ever skating or surfing. You picked it up sort of early and really easily, right? I did pick it up early, but I guess it's not early now to today's standards. You know, I really got into it when I was 11. About the same, maybe 12 or something. Yeah, 11, 12. 11, 12. Now it's like four and five. Yeah. So like when we started skating, it wasn't an accepted, like a widely accepted thing. Now it is kind of like a cooler thing to do where yeah, you don't get like, a beer can thrown at you when you're skating down the street yeah. anymore, you know? I had buddies back, like, in the early 90s who were skating. Like, they had all their spots. They would always inevitably, like, cruise to a, a strip mall. They'd go grub afterwards, and, like, sometimes I'd meet them. I'd meet for that portion of it. We would meet up at places because we didn't have a way to communicate with other people, you know? We were eating at Carl's Jr., getting big stars. I think that maybe had I lived in L.A., it would have been, like, more... See, I was in... Anchorage, Alaska, then Phoenix, Arizona. Mm -hmm. now, there's not as much diverse kind of foods and stuff like that. It, and with, when you're on a budget too, that's a little easier, you know. But then you, you'd you find places like when I lived here in LA, then you started to find these spots that were, that would be like this. And that's just, you only found out because you either live close to it, you know, mm -hmm. around the corner, across the street. It's like so spicy. Whoa. This looks so good. So with this thing, this chaofa, in Peru, there's a ton of Chinese people there. So there's definitely this influence of, of Chinese cooking into the food. This is Peruvian fried rice. All of these things together is pretty magical, I think. Are we forgetting to get anything that we should get? It's 179, that one is cream with mustard sauce. Should we add that Let's one to it. the number 79? Let's do it, yeah. It's really like good. phenomenal. That was, that was... I'm like, I'm blown away by this. 79, yeah, no wonder. She's like, oh, you didn't get the 79. 79 like, that's the one, yeah. 79, everyone. <laughs> There's something I've been really meaning to cross off my bucket list. Ride in a Star Tours van. This is the Munchies Guide to Hollywood, after all. So I've rented a Star Tours van, and it's taking me and my friend Eric Wareheim for tacos and late night Thai sweets. In addition to being one half of the comedy duo Tim and Eric, star of Master of None, and most recently a winemaker, Eric is one of my favorite eating partners. You guys ready for your Hollywood tour? Yeah. You're so ready. Right. So I want you in the third row right back there, if you will. All right. Our tour guide, Christian, got us settled into our chariot and then blessed us with his beatboxing skills. We're gonna start the tour off with a little theme song that I prepared for you guys. Be ready for it. It goes a little something like this. Oh my God. <laughs> like this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Welcome to Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Welcome to Hollywood. <laughs> there you go, guys. I wanted to show you guys the home of Halle Berry. I don't know if you knew that she was right up the street from your store there, but it is right here on the uh, right hand side. Oh, I know. Hollywood sign was built in the early 1920s by the Hollywood Land Realty Company. It used to read Hollywood Land all the way across until the LAND was ironically taken out by a landslide. 
This is the Grauman's Chinese Theater. This is where all the world premieres are held right there. What up? What's up? <laughs> Welcome to Hollywood. So we're going to Tacos Leo right now for Al Pastor Tacos. Do you remember so the first time you had this? I've never had Tacos Leos. No way. I've never had it. It's been on my radar for a while. Dope. Everyone's been talking to me about it, so I'm so excited to try it. Someone told me, think about the sort of life that you want to have, and then just like fucking go do it. Manifest you know, it, yeah. like go go make it. And you seem to be doing that. You know, for <laughs> yeah. real. Like I was a kind of a nerdy kid growing up, and all I wanted to do is like have my mark on something. You know, like be famous or, you know, be, I, that's why I was in bands, because you want to fucking be cool and on the stage and people like you. When Tim and I came out here, we instantly realized that that's not the right kind of motivation to like make work. And we like totally reverted back into the Philly world of being like, let's just incubate this like interesting weird shit that we only think is funny and maybe the world will love it. It's scary to like go out there and just fucking do it. And there's a lot of failure, it sucks, but um, I think that puts you in a good like creative headspace. It's good to like not be comfortable, you know? Just be like, I can't, I, I'm gonna have to move back to Philly. That's like a good feeling yeah. in Hollywood. You fucking go all in, and that's what Tim and I did. When did you start caring about food? I cared about food my whole life. My mom was a good cook, she's like off the boat German. I didn't have Thai food until I was like 25, or sushi. You know, Philly was pretty shit back then. So as soon as you got to LA, you were pretty much like turned on by the yeah. idea of going yeah. to eat and, and also, all that sort of just stuff. Just the options of LA. Yeah. I've been fasting for four days for this Taco Leo's experience. <laughs> Do you ever drink wine with tacos, or is it more? Wine is just, great just with tacos, dude. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we got a whole selection here. This is what we do in LA. When we get tacos, we take a tour bus, we get our sippy cups. Dude. Chris does the selection. Australian. Oh. Tom Showbrook, full side Syrah. I've never had them. If you look at the color, you look at how clear it is. Like... The cool thing about this cup is it's really good. It's really, it really helps you see the color. I mean, everything is pink. This is how we do it. Eric and Chris buy tacos by Leo. <laughs> Let's get some tacos. That's how yeah. we do it. Oh man, I'm pumped. This your yeah. this your first, dude. Dude, I'm so stoked. Look how beautiful that is, man. So I've never seen it this thick because I always come at like yeah. one in the morning. Yeah. It's like chiseled down to a little. It's one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen in my life, and I've seen a lot of beautiful things. And then we'll do six Al Pastor tacos. And one um, Al Pastor alambre. I take care of you, baby. You do. I take care of you. You give me my juice and get me my tacos. That's why I love my daddy. <laughs> This is kind of like a high-end taco truck experience, yeah. right? You got the register standing out front. You got two salsa areas. Look how oh. beautiful this is. This is, to me, is like one of those only in LA kind of things. We're eating in a parking lot of a shoe store. Oh, baby. See, this is where it's at, man. Yeah. So a little onion, a little green. It's unreal, dude. So this one has like sauteed peppers and cheese. Maybe this is like an LA version of like a Philly cheesesteak deconstructed. Good, right? It's like heaven. It's a Mexican cheesesteak. It's like exactly what it is. This is perfect food right here. One thing I've learned is very important in the taco. You see how Chris does this lean? It's all about you gotta bring that body over. You dribble down into your other entree and then you eat your dribbles later. That's how we do it in LA. It's so, so good. I also feel like one of the greatest things about taco trucks in LA is like eating on the streets, like hanging out with everyone, dancing with this girl. This experience is pretty specific to LA. I yeah, think, you know? I actually feel like most comfortable here sitting on this plastic chair with you than I do at like the fanciest Beverly Hills spot where I 
I, I don't feel me. I don't feel welcome. I don't, I'm, it's not for me. So you want to get some Thai dessert? Yeah, we need some sweet to like balance out the spice. We are off to Ban Kanam Thai to enjoy some sweet desserts. Ban Kanam Thai, direct translation is a house of Thai desserts. We make uh, traditional Thai desserts, maybe in a little bit more modern way. You do actually have a lot of people like who visit Thailand and they try to eat desserts and then they come here in LA and they try to like, oh my God, I remember this. This is what I got on the streets in, a, in Thailand. Hi. Hi, how are you? Wow, here's all the photos of it. That's amazing. I'm a big fan of any spot that has uh, the photo menu board. That's sort of a lost art. This one, it's saturated. It's like drawing me in. I think we should definitely stuff? do some mango and sticky rice. And let's try one of these things. Yeah, those look good. This is sort of like a classic Thai dessert, but in a very user-friendly form. Ruamit, it just means combo. Bunch of stuff and, and coconut. Looks super good. Everything looks really this good. This looks super good. And crazy at the same time. Wild, right? Yeah, I love it. Let's try it. Let's try one of those. I'd like to try some of these crepes. Can we do like three of each, maybe? The kanonbuang is what a lot of people like to call a Thai taco. Basically, it's a crispy crepe with a meringue on top of it. And then we put the phai tong, which is like a sweetened egg yolk. For the salty version, it's coconut and shrimp. I got salty egg yolk mm -hmm. for mine. Did you get that? Yeah. Yeah, it's sweet and salty. Mm -hmm. I'm probably most excited for pink milk. Yeah. Two straws. Wow. Thank you. Two straws, one for you, one for daddy. Please, daddy. Mm. <sighs> pink milk. What is that? This is, um, this is Little Farms garlic bread. Um, there's a little bit of Italian mixed with Thai. A little farm to table. It's my company. It's, I'm, I'm the president of Little Farm, so. Hashtag uh, ad. Yeah, didn't really want to make this a sponsored bit, but you could go out to littlefarm.com and buy as much garlic bread as you can. Uh, we have a combo pack, a 12 pack that's, that's really good. It's like to support farm to table. Let's do it. <laughs> I think it was a pretty good night, right? Yeah. There's beauty in this part of LA. For people who have never been to Hollywood, the things that you might think about are glitz, glamour, luxury, expensive food, but really there's a whole other side to it. It's accessible, inexpensive, bold, flavorful, and unassuming. It's food by everyone for everyone.